Mongoose Jake here with a number of internal videos that I had promised I would make and these are going to be covering all of the new releases by Busby under the Adventure Force line and I'm going to do them in this exact same order that I released the Blaster unboxing and review videos. So of course we're going to start with the Equalizer which as expected I, I'm going to note a couple things here. All of the screws are of the same length so there is no uh, no worry on finding which one goes where. There is no solvent welding on the shell. There is no hidden screws. What you see is what you get. So just remove all the screws, flip the blaster over. As you can see, there are no screws on this side. The internals are on the same side as the screws. So with that done, and the only real thing to watch out for is the return spring and the indexing mechanism tends to stick to the shell on the other side so it's easy to figure out that it you know goes right back into this uh, this track or rail and then just reattach it here now as you can see this is basically gem internals not wizard internals but gem internals now that's not a bad thing it, that explains a lot. I was assuming before I took it apart that it was probably going to be wizard internals. But this plunger tube is about the same as the gem. It just has been upgraded to hold four shots instead of the gem's three. Of course, that was why I assumed it was going to be wizard internals. But I will zoom in real close and I'll let you see a good look at it for references. Very simple. The, the barrel system just... It sits in and it has a, a one direction it can go. And then you have the rotating plunger tube with the very familiar internals of a sliding indexer that is spring loaded. I'll have to back off so it stays focused. It is spring loaded. And again, it it is very easy to determine. You have the hook on the plunger rod and this sits right in front of it very very simple internals that everybody who has modded a gem wizard clash combat any of those should be very familiar with and the most finicky thing is this return spring that's it everything else you have the same collar on it that most of the busby pistols have and a strong arm size spring it's shorter than a strong arm but it's the same diameter and for reference purposes, while I do this video, we're going to take a Busby MagFed spring, which is very similar to a Retaliator. And yes, that would fit. It would need cut down, but it would fit. So, question answered. Could it take a Retaliator spring? Because that is my go-to for modding, is Retaliator size. They're easy to come by and lots of choices of spring rates. So, it, it could take a strong arm or... A retaliator spring so that is very simple it does have a bit of dead space on the front of the plunger head like most busby you can easy, easily easily um, if somebody wanted to do a 3d print like say for instance like um radioactive designs has a 3d printed dead space filler for his uh, x shot reflex kits that would be a good idea for these to then epoxy in but i mean very simple you got to put the Reassemble it with the hook up, slide on the uh, spring rest ring, and then set that back down in. The uh, catch mechanism is back here, and it is held in place with its own screw and plate. And uh, in typical Busby simplicity, it's just activated like so. Very few inner working parts. And there is a little bit of mod potential. I would say, you know, of course, dead space removal. There's no no real true air restrictors in the blaster. They're all self-contained in this whole unit. So drilling this out and brassing it with a higher spring and dead space removal, that's going to be the go-to. I'll button this back up and we'll move on to the next one. Hope this was helpful. I'll leave this here. As you can see it, let me actually reassemble it, and I'll leave this for a community resource, sort of, in case anybody does want to take a stab at modifying these for higher FPS.